Hi everyone, welcome, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. And it looks like I don't have any coffee in here, I swear I do. It's just my coffee machine is kind of broken right now and I'm gutted. So I've had to go to the local Tesco, get myself a Costa from the machine and pour it into my mugs to make it look like I'm making these myself. Don't worry, I will be getting a new coffee machine. I'm just, at the minute, it's gonna be a little bit of a struggle. However, we're just gonna make do. If I have to order a Starbucks every day, like three times a day, then that's fine. It's already getting cold as well. Okay. Shit. Shit. Damn it, why do I do this? Right, I'm putting that down. So today in this video, I am doing a Christmassy festive vlog and I'm doing this because me and my bestie Lexi over at Alexandra Roslin are doing a 48 hour readathon. It's called the Baby It's Cold Outside Readathon. That was Lexi's idea. Like. Perfect, right? Perfect. And and so true, because it's absolutely freezing outside. It's raining so much right now. Wow. But the Baby It's Cold Outside readathon is for our patrons. So we're doing this kind of Friday to Sunday 48 hour readathon. And I'm just so excited. It hasn't even started. It's only Thursday today, but I thought I would get on top of filming this intro so that when the 48 hour readathon starts, I can spend all of it doing what I need to, to get everything read, everything done, and avoiding doing side hustles like this, you know? So that is what we're doing in this video. I don't even have the books I need to read. This readathon is gonna be so much fun. We have so much planned. We're gonna kick off the readathon with some Patreon reading sprints, and then we also have a movie watch along on the Saturday night. We're gonna be watching Falling for Christmas, which is out on Netflix now, starring Lindsay Lohan. And I love Lindsay Lohan so much. I've been so excited for this film for the longest time since it was announced. So I'm so excited to be watching that with Lexi and our patrons. I also have a movie night for Disenchanted on Sunday, but that's after the readathon ends. So yeah, I'm also excited for that. We are calling the Baby It's Called Outside a Readathon the ultimate slumber party weekend. If you have ever been to any slumber party with me and Lexi online, we usually do them. We've done a few now and it's always a blast. So that's how we're approaching this readathon too. We also have proms and Lexi's made this incredible bingo board as well so that people can follow along. And the proms are all Christmas song related or at least they have a Christmas song attached to them. So we've also made a playlist and it's just so much festive goodness, you know? It gets me so excited for Christmas coming up. Even with all the stress of life at the minute, like my stress levels are at 107. So to have something like this come along and bring my stress down and remind me the true meaning of Christmas, then it's all for the greater good. So I'm going to tell you what my TBR is for this readathon. And I do have three books. I'm really hoping that I get to all three of them. Ah, uh, fingers crossed we do. And I'm gonna like double up in things. There are prompts like self-care or Mariah self care -y. That was a little gem that I did. You know, I had to contribute something. So I do feel like the books I picked for this readathon will hit so many prompts. And so I'm gonna be like doubling up and stuff. There's definitely three I wanna read and I'll most likely only get to these three. But those three books that I'm reading are the Mistletoe Trilogy by Richard Paul Evans. So I have the Mistletoe Promise and look how cute and small and beautiful these books are. These are Christmas Persona personified or bookified. I don't know what you call it when a book is. Anyway, this is the first book, The Mistletoe Promise. All of these have been made into Hallmark films as well, by the way. And I have seen all of the Hallmark films for them, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but I've definitely seen the film for The Mistletoe Promise. I really love it. I think it's one of like the best Hallmark Christmas films I've seen. So much fun. So I think it'll be awesome to read the original source material for it. So that's the first book. The second book is The Mistletoe Actually, no, it's not. The second book is The Mistletoe Inn, I think. <laughs> and this one looks so cool and cozy as well. Loving the green. And then we also have The Mistletoe Secret. And all of these are by Richard Paul Evans. I don't know if I mentioned that. The King of Christmas Fiction, apparently. And I just love how they all look together. They are so cute. So cute. So I'm excited to get my Christmas on this weekend. The prompts that I think these books will cover are You Make It Feel Like Christmas, which is read a book with festive vibes. Also, Oh Holy Night, which is read a book in a cozy atmosphere, which I will be able to do in my library room. I think my library is quite cozy. Sleigh Ride, read a book that goes on a journey. So yeah, I feel like those books will take me on an emotional journey. Cause I don't know about you. I mean, I love watching Hallmark Christmas films, but I also love to tear them apart and hate on them a lot of the times too. I take off all of the tropes in a bingo board and I just slate them nonstop. But then by the end of it, I'm still smiling. I'm still crying. I'm still loving my time. It's just part of the Hallmark Christmas experience. You know, you love and hate them at the same time. So I feel like these books will be the perfect embodiment of that. And then also Frosty the Snowman, which is read a book with snow or white on the cover. And all of them have 
white on the cover. All of them have snow on the cover. So that's all of those ones done. And then there are other prompts like the self-care, join in on reading sprints, make yourself a festive drink. Although now I don't have my coffee machine, so I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm just have to buy a festive drink, I think. Even though I have gingerbread syrup, I have hazelnut syrup, I have things that I could use to make myself a festive drink. I just don't have the means anymore. I'm so sad. We also have a share your TBR and watch a holiday movie. So a lot of things that we have planned for this weekend are going to tick off all of the prompts in the bingo board. So me and Lexi have covered everything, I hope. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so excited to do this with Lexi and to do this with Lexi's patrons as well. It's gonna be so good. So without further ado, let's get into our Hallmark How to Train Your Gavin Christmas vlog. <laughs> This is just filmed on my phone, but this is my new coffee machine. Do you love it? Do you love it? Do you mind? Got a place for the coffee beans. I've got, you know, more options <laughs> than my previous one. I love it so much. Ash, do you mind? I'm trying to show everyone my new coffee machine, honestly. But yeah, this is fancy. Absolutely fancy. I can't wait. Can't wait to try my first coffee with it. I'm about to join Lexi very, very soon for the sprints, but my Udi arrived. I look so cute. <laughs> and we're live! Ah, I'm so excited! Hello! Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 48-hour, baby, it's cold outside, slumber party, cuddle up at a weekend, weekend wow that was long oh by the way before we uh start to get into like the tbr and stuff do you want to show all mm. of us what you're wearing like your cute cozy yes what is it called an udi yes. an udi yeah i'm gonna have to turn this over so i can stand oh yeah <laughs> but this yeah this is this is my <gasps> udi it's very long it's almost I love like a dress. It. it's amazing oh, i'm going out spring. oh it's, it's so honestly, the most comfiest thing <laughs> Perfect timing. I've just finished my chapter. How do you, what do you, do you like it? <laughs> the the setup of it is kind of almost like Fifty Shades of Grey, but without the kinky stuff. It's like very wholesome and Christmas. Cute. And it's like, yeah, it's like if somebody presented you a contract, like let's not be lonely in this Christmas and let's just do things together. I'm so excited because we are officially, let me take off this into the icebreakers. Okay, I know they're called icebreakers, but I I thought I capitalized it because like ice for winter, you get it? Yeah. I get it, I get, it's perfect, it's genius. You guys have to tell us a prompt and then we can't look and we have to try drawing it with our eyes closed and then we see which person made it look the most like the prompt. Christmas tree, okay. Got the first one. Christmas tree. Okay, go. I can't see how this is staring at me. It's done. Oh, it's done. Oh no, mine's really bad. Mine looks beautiful, actually. Does it? beautiful, no. Okay, okay, I'll show in, in, in three seconds. Ready? Three, okay, two, yeah. one. Hey. This is so much better than mine! Let's go. Here we go. <laughs> I don't oh, want to wow. show your face! I don't want to show it! I don't want to show mine. Mine looks offensive. <laughs> <laughs> one. Oh, oh, yours is beautiful. Yours is beautiful. Also, Gavin, keep it PG 13, mm. okay, my friend? No, oh! I was glad. I was, I'm glad you said that. I'm Gavin's glad like, that. well, let me explain. <laughs> Go. Please, <that> perfect. <laughs> Let's just keep making faces. You're not going to be 
able to guess mine. Tell me if you can actually guess mine. Ready? Show yours first. Can you guess what mine is? Baking. No. <laughs> I thought that was an oven. I thought that was like an oven, and then I thought you had maybe tray of cookies. You're, um, where are the cookies, Gavin? Making a hot drink. I thought they were in your hands. It, it <laughs> Is that look, coffee? It does look like a hot drink. It's a fireplace. Oh, it's a fireplace. What are it's you putting to... logs in a fire? It's no. It's that's me with a book. <laughs> uh, did you put the book in the fire? No. Is it on flame? Is it? <laughs> I think it's in flames. No. <laughs> Book burning. That's your favorite Christmas activity. Wow. Oh I, I, I'm not going to look at you the same. <laughs> look, a lot of I people got it, it though. Look, that's crazy. I... <laughs> this is only after I worked it out. Okay. But okay, this is mine. Wait, get it a little closer. Okay, I know what yours is. Yours is, you freaking won again. You're watching a Hallmark <laughs> film with your cats. Yeah. 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 Go. Damn it! <laughs> you already lost. I love to, but it's okay. I didn't start. Gavin, there's no way you would know this. Gavin, I don't even know oh. what this is. You're not gonna get it. <laughs> I don't know what is, this is. Is it elf? It's elf. Yeah, because isn't that like is that supposed to be like New York or something? Yeah, that's supposed to be. New so York. that's that's. Well, that's Elf. That's Buddy. Uh, that's him. Buddy. Yeah. And then yeah. we've got the North Pole, and then we've got New York, oh, yeah. and then that was a taxi. This is mine. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you get it. You you do okay. understand what this is. The Santa Claus. Yes. I got it? Really? <laughs> it's the Santa Claus, yeah. Okay, so 30 seconds. I'm drawing you, and you're drawing me. All right. Let's, let's make it even harder. Draw it upside down. Okay. So when, we <laughs> so when we flip it, that's us. So you can't draw it right side up. Okay. Ready, set, yeah. go. This is easier because I can actually see you. So I can kind of... Is it? It's really freaking yeah. hard to me. I'm definitely I'm to not. not. I'm really trying not to look. Okay. Okay, so we'll flip it. Let's flip it at the exact same time. Are you ready? I haven't seen it. I don't know what it looks like. I have not seen mine yet. Are you ready? No. Oh, no. Three. So we're going to flip it. Two. One. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> oh my god, Lex, I need to say mine again. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you got a mustache. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand yours at all. Is... Oh wow. Am I melting? <laughs> you know what? That's my new Tinder profile. That's my new Tinder pic. <laughs> <laughs> I made you look like a demon in a horror movie. I'm so sorry. Please hold it up closer to the camera, please. Oh my god. Is it socially acceptable to wear this Udi every single vlog update? Because I'm not taking it off this entire weekend, let's be real. 
I even got a panda face mask delivered today so that I can have the full works tonight because I'm doing the Falling for Christmas movie watch along with Lexi and the gang doing the Baby It's Cold Outside readathon. So imagine, I mean, I'll probably look like shit. Maybe I'll look cute with it on and I'll be like the whole panda thing. It's not Christmassy whatsoever, but what I did get that nobody really knows about apart from Lexi and I might surprise my patrons with it at some point. I haven't even tried it on yet. I've just opened it but I got like a <laughs> I got like a Grinch mask thing because I was looking for face masks you know um Christmas face masks and this came up and it was so cheap I was like well damn maybe I should go for it I will you know what my cats haven't even seen it on I wonder how they'll react let's find out so yesterday I did do that really fun live stream with Lexi kicking off the readathon and I laughed so much I gave myself a headache yesterday. I mean fortunately the headache didn't last long but it was that great of an experience. I always love doing reading sprints with Lexi or just like any live show with Lexi in all honesty. She is just so great to do them with. She just relaxes me. She makes it fun and we had so much fun. It was so good. So yeah we did that and I actually read a whole lot of the Mistletoe Promise in that first sprint. I read half the book and we only did like three half an hour sprints. So I went through this book like this. Like I was racing along and it was so good. I said this in the live show. I said it's kind of a little bit like Fifty Shades of Grey, but if you take away all the kinkiness and make it wholesome Christmas kind of thing, because this does follow Elise and Nicholas. They work in the same kind of mall or building and they seem to come across each other quite a lot in the food court. And one day Nicholas comes up to Elise and says, look, we're both probably sick of being alone at Christmas. Why don't we draw up this like mistletoe contract, which they renamed the Mistletoe Promise, and pretend to date one another until December 24th at midnight going into Christmas Day. And I kind of really like love that. I've seen a lot of fake dating recently. I just read a Bridgerton book that was like that. In fact, The Duke and I, the first book in Bridgerton, I read like last week or something, and it had the same kind of premise. You know, they fake date in order to convince people that they're not alone and that they can like you know just live in peace kind of thing well this was kind of the same and I really enjoyed it because Elise she is very self-conscious about the way she looks she works with somebody who makes her feel like a bit shit about herself in the way she looks and stuff so to have Nicholas who is like this rich lawyer person and he is a partner at a firm to spoil Elise Rotten and to send her gifts every day and all of that was just so nice and I do remember it from the TV movie that I really do enjoy too. I will say this is a lot darker than that. There was, I mean, I haven't watched the movie in quite some time but I don't recall this particular storyline happening which I will not say because of spoilers but it was like really heavy. In fact, it was rather traumatic what happens and yeah, it was just dark. It was very dark. It added another level to Elise as a character, of course. But yeah, it was um quite depressing in a way. It was like, very, very sad. Very sad. But it was still fantastic. I really enjoyed it. It was just the wholesomeness, the quickness of a story as well. It was just what I needed right now, especially to kick off this readathon. I will say though, I feel like what I don't really like a whole lot with romance is that we get a whole lot of backstory on characters and I would say about 90% of it isn't even relevant you know like it's nice to know a character more but when it's a fictional character I just read like these paragraphs upon paragraphs of their childhood or whatever and think this is information I don't really necessarily need so I just feel like it's padding I feel like I can totally disagree. I feel like a lot of romance is just padding because we are given like this fictional backstory on characters who in the grand scheme of things don't exist. So it kind of feels a little bit redundant a lot of the time. And I just wanted to get to the actual romance. I wanted to get to the stuff that did add to the characters in the present day. So yeah, there was some relevant information backstory wise, but there were a lot of kind of them getting to know one another. And it's almost like you're just sitting in on a date, right? You're just like sitting in on someone's first date and you're listening to what they're talking about and how they're, you know, revealing one another to one another, which is fine, honestly, but I find it rather redundant a lot of the time in romance. I just, I feel like it's padding. It's just to add to the word count. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> also, I need my hair cut, so that's why I've got the hood up, because my hair is just 
an absolute mess, an absolute nightmare right now. That's fine. But saying that, this did give me all the Christmassy vibes that I wanted. So it was a success. It was a really good success of a book. I thought it was quite well written too. So that means I'll be going into The Mistletoe Inn, which feels a little bit thicker, but it looks just as pretty, just as beautiful. And I think I remember seeing the movie of this one, not as memorable as this one, I don't think. But this one I believe is about a romance writer and she goes to this sort of like writer's retreat inn and she ends up coming across another writer and I think they fall in love. <laughs> I really need to rewatch the movie of this in all honesty. But yeah, this one sounds just as wholesome so I'm really excited for that. And now my cat has found the Grinch thing. Should I put it on, BB? Should I put it on to see if you like it or will you run away like I did when I put on the Aslan costume? That's the question. Mm. Right, let's try the thing on and see if it scares them. <laughs> I'm such a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's terrifying. Oh my lord. Wow, okay, let's see how the cats react. <laughs> Hi, babies. Hiya, baby. Hiya, Tobu. Tobu. Tobu, look. Tobu. Look. Hiya. Oh, you just don't even care, do you? Oh, God's sake. <laughs> Abu. Abu. Yeah, they don't care. <laughs> I've got a couple of things going on at once here. I have Cats Running Wild. I have a new premiere of Amy's Crypt as well, which I have on. I also have Gabby doing reading sprints on the big screen. I think Ash has just gone for a shit. I've opened the wine. Oh, bliss. <laughs> Absolute bliss. Oh, my God, I've had a day. Oh. Uh, right, I do have a wholesome movie night with Lexi in 40 minutes. Okay, we're watching Fallen for Christmas, I've already mentioned. And it's supposed to be cute, cosy, wholesome. I've got the wine. I'm ready to cry. <laughs> just some things to do with, like, housemate stuff and that. It's just, whew, like, lots of, lots of things happening, lots of things happening. So I read all of this today, trying to escape reality, escape life. And I don't really want to talk about it. <laughs> Like, I liked it. I liked it a lot. I'd give it four stars just like I would give the first one. And it follows Kimberly. She meets an aspiring writer called Zeke at the Mistletoe Retreat, which is a bit like a writer's retreat. And it was so cute and cosy and wholesome and Christmassy, just like the first one was. And what was great about this one, if you hear lots of noise, they are just running around right now. It's 11 o'clock at night. This should be settled down for bed. But this is honestly everything I dream about going on a retreat, going to do some writing in a nice snowy cabin getaway, you know? It's like what I've always dreamed of, either as a writer or as a reader. Honestly, I have writing I have to do this month too. Oh my gosh. But this is a hallmark how to train your garden Christmas. There is no sadness. There is no stress because that doesn't happen in a hallmark film, okay? Everything's hunky-dory. Everything is hunky-dory. This is why hallmark channel films are toxic. Too many unrealistic expectations of men, for instance, and the festive season. I can't count on one hand, because I have to count on both hands and then get way more hands in order to count. How many times this perky white blonde woman goes to a brand new town and the first person she bumps into is the hunky single guy who lives there and gets with them before Christmas. And sometimes she hates Christmas and she changes her mind by Christmas. Okay, I really need to go up and clean her shit. Ash, honestly, why did you have to do it when I started filming? You're showing me up. But this movie night is honestly everything I need. Do you want more thoughts on this? I don't think you really do. I don't think you do. But it was very good. I liked it. I liked it a lot. I just could not think as I was reading it, but I wanted to finish it today because it was nice, wholesome, Yes. Oh. Why are you fighting? <laughs> Daddy's drinking. Wait, I'm also excited as well because I haven't shown Lexi the Grinch mask yet. And I think when she comes onto the stream yard backstage, I'm gonna have it on so that I scare her when she comes in. <laughs> and I'll try and record it as well. I'll record it. Honestly, I'm such a bitch. Lexi, if you're watching this, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. <laughs> I just want some joy. And sometimes scaring Lexi is my favorite thing to do. Just think back to the Cruella de Vil face mask, you know? Right, let's do this. Okay, we're gonna scare Lexi. She's seen the message for the StreamYard link. 
just waiting for her to, to come in. Yeah, she is. We'll see. Oh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like it? I love it. Say hi to the vlog. <laughs> Hello. Oh my gosh, you look so good though. Ah, and we're live. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the festive Christmas movie portion. Uh, I'm so excited that you guys are here. We are just waiting on Gab. He's almost ready. Um, so as you guys come in, I would love to hear from you guys. What are you planning on drinking for this cozy movie night? And also let me know what your favorite Christmas movie is. Tonight, I am drinking a cozy hot chocolate with delicious marshmallows that literally taste like cake. I'm not even kidding you. I have probably had about 12 of these. Uh, and I will let you guys know, my favorite Christmas movie is by far The Grinch, or like How the Grinch Stole Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. <laughs> He literally tried to scare me with that and he was like you didn't jump and i was like well that's because when i was a kid i had a crush on the grinch so he was me, <laughs> i should have known i should have known the grinch is such a catch <laughs> heart of gold but he's grumpy on the outside i'm the sunshine to his grump you know what i mean yes. where is he in real life where are you christmas anyways it's called falling for christmas and it's on netflix yes. thank you guys okay so I, right is everyone ready five Four, three, two, one, play!
wishing all a Merry Christmas Day. Ah, uh, I'm still pulling hair out from my mouth from the Grinch mask. That was like a night ago. <laughs> oh, it is the end of the readathon. It, well, it's Sunday night. It ended a good few hours ago. I did extend it a little bit. Not gonna lie, I extended it. As a co-host, I feel like I had the right. But I did want to go out today. I wanted to go into Newcastle and to see some of the Christmas markets, sit in Costa, have a nice gingerbread and cream latte, finish reading my third and final book, and go on a little bit of a book buying spree, because I needed it. I deserved it. And I also got my hair cut. It was about time. I kept complaining about it in every single video. You guys were probably sick of it. I digress. Let's get into the book haul I did today. So I went into Forbidden Planet, which is fast becoming one of my favourite stores, because I am getting so bang into manga, and I ended up buying eight volumes of manga. First volumes of eight different manga series that I'm really interested in reading. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to read each volume for a video, and I'm going to say which series I will binge read next during One Piece. I'm going to be reading One Piece until the end of my life. But I do want another manga series to read alongside it. So I'm looking for that perfect manga. So I bought eight. I'm not going to tell you what they are. I'm going to keep them a surprise. But I will show you two books I bought. I bought Legends and Laddies by Travis Baldry. This is the published hardback edition. It was a self-published book, but I think the publisher actually released it as a full-on novel after the success. And the kind of hype that happened around the book when you saw the beautiful cover of it, which I do have. I have a copy of it with the regular self-published cover, which actually is on the inside of this version, which is so pretty. But yeah, I'm so excited to read this. Lexi really recommended this recently as well, so it would have been perfect for the Baby It's Cold Outside readathon too, just for like the coziness of it. So yeah, I bought this one, and I also bought this too. It is Christmas Gothic Short Stories. It's by different authors, it's got loads of various authors in it. Oh, it's got J.M. Barry, it's got Charles Dickens in here. So it has got authors I know. Now they can see anything on there, but if you want to give it a pause to see what's in here, then there you go. And more too. I've never seen these editions of books before. I saw them in Forbidden Planet and I was tempted to get all of them, but I thought I would just get the one that was fitting for this vlog, and that's the Christmas one, the Christmas Gothic Short Stories. Gorgeous, gorgeous cover. I love the skull with the Santa hat on. That is so cool. And then the eight mangas that I'm not going to show you. Oh wait, no, I bought seven manga in two One Piece light novels. I will tell you I bought two One Piece light novels. Anyway, let me tell you about the final book of this vlog. I didn't really like it. And I didn't think I would like it after reading the synopsis of it. So this one actually follows Alex and he ends up kind of falling in love with a blogger. So he's feeling quite lonely and he searches lonely in a search bar and finds this blog that belongs to somebody called LBH. And LBH writes loads of posts about being lonely. So Alex takes it upon himself to find this blogger. So as a, as a vlogger myself, it is very unnerving and it is a little bit stalker-esque to track someone down online. It's done in a romantic way. It's trying to come across as romantic. But that whole thing, that whole premise, it didn't work for me. It really didn't work for me. I don't think I have seen the whole Mark Channel version of this. And I wonder how that works because I think it would look worse acted out. <laughs> so it'll be really interesting to watch that. But I honestly couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't. And this one just was not that Christmassy. It was set during Christmas, but it didn't have the same Christmas essence as the first two books, which these are all standalone books, by the way, which I think you probably have already grasped. Yeah, it wasn't very Christmassy. It didn't give me those wholesome vibes and it just wasn't great. I didn't think the characters were all that explored. This was a very melancholic book. I feel like all of them have been a little bit dark, but this one was just melancholic throughout the entire thing. And it's great to explore loneliness. In fact, LBH wrote this incredible like a blog post thing, which I read and I was like, oh my God, that actually hurts. And I doggy at the page. I don't usually do that, I promise. But I didn't want to lose this part. But yeah, LBH writes on their blog, this morning I was walking into work from my car and looked up to see a single orange balloon flown into the sky. I was late for work, but something made me stop and watch it get smaller and smaller until it disappeared into the clouds. I guess I felt like it needed a witness, someone to stand there and say, I saw you float away. I saw you disappear. I wish someone would do that for me. It's... <laughs> It's, I wouldn't want someone to watch me disappear. I would want them to stop me from disappearing, you know what I mean? But that whole metaphor or like that whole 
feeling like I can totally get and it's such a nice sentiment to stand there and watch this balloon go away and think I want this balloon that goes away to have had a witness to have had somebody that actually cared for a moment you know something like that it it did touch me in certain ways and the loneliness theme definitely did ring very true to me and it was it was good in that aspect but overall I genuinely couldn't look past the creepiness of the storyline and the author has no qualms with it being displayed as romantic when really it is creepy it's creepy and the fact that it really didn't feel very Christmassy was quite a letdown for me so unfortunately not great and that's a bummer because I really did enjoy the first two I think if I ranked them it would go the mistletoe promise is my favorite and then the mistletoe in and then the mistletoe secret so this series got progressively worse <laughs> <laughs> but I would say the first two books were really good. It's just the third one that let it down. But I would still say this was a very successful reading vlog because I managed to get all three read. I did extend the deadline just a little bit for the readathon, but these were really fast, quick, and easy reads. I think if I wasn't doing other things on top of the reading, then I would have gotten done. I feel like I would have finished these in the 48 hours, no problem. And now I really do want to watch more Hallmark Christmas films. I loved Falling for Christmas. I thought it was so good. I mean, it's cheesy. It's got a lot of plot holes. It's definitely something you have to suspend your disbelief with, but it was so good. And I am here for the Lohan essence, okay? I want Lindsay Lohan to be on top of the world again. I love her. I think she's fantastic. And I think she should do more Christmas movies in all honesty. I really do. And I would totally watch that film again. I thought it was so good. If you've watched Fallen for Christmas, let me know in the comments. Did you love it? Did you hate it? If you hated it, that's fine. That's fine. Christmas movies are just corny by nature. So I just totally let myself enjoy the film. I'm just like getting rid of all my inhibitions. I'm not looking at this critically. I'm just enjoying what I'm seeing and enjoyed I did. And Lexi loved it as well and so many of our patrons did too and it was a great time watching it with them. It was so fun. I always love movie nights. I do movie nights on Patreon pretty much four times a month and I do true crime and wine nights with my patrons as well which is so fun. I need to do another one of those because it's been a while but it's hard to get into true crime during the festive period for me. Ooh, I might see if there's any festive true crime documentaries. Ooh, now there's a shout. If you have any festive true crime documentary recommendations, please let me know in the comments too. But anyway, that is the end of the vlog. I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to check out Lexi as well, my absolute icon and legend and bae. I will link Lexi down in the description box as well as her Patreon. Her Patreon is Oh, out of this world, incredible. I would totally recommend joining. It's so good. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on the vlog. Let me know your thoughts on Christmas in general and the Christmas movies. Are you in the festive mood? Are you in the festive mood or do you need a little bit more time? It's fine if you need more time, but I hope I helped a little bit with my vlog. That would mean the world to me. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel. If you'd like to join my Patreon or follow me on any social media, then all the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye.